Double cyclone threat for Australia materialising on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for March 14th. We're well, still code yellow for an Australian threat right now. Cyclone Filippo on its second win as it enters or exits the stage down towards the south of Madagascar. And 18S is continuing to struggle. It's actually weakened to tropical depression status, but we expect it will strengthen again soon. We've still got that area of interest marked in the Atlantic. It's round about its peak conditions right now. It is warm core. Uh, but we don't expect it to become a tropical cyclone or subtropical for that matter. Still 10% just to cover our bases. Uh, 61 days until hurricane season in the eastern Pacific. No areas of interest here, uh, but a large arc of weather there extending from the deep tropics well up towards the north, just side uh, lining Hawaii there. In the Western Pacific, not much going on here, but one or two little disturbances down there in the Micronesian region, but nothing that warrants our attention. And in the North Indian Ocean, extremely quiet there right now, hardly any cloud cover at all. Well, this is where the action is right now. Cyclone 18S, a depression at this point, and an area of interest that is currently being given now an 80% chance of forming, and that's likely to happen now in the Gulf of Carpentaria. It's moved a little bit further north than expected, which means that it's closer to the water, and so it looks like it's got an even better chance of developing. And here's Filippo uh, cruising southeastwards now, away from Africa and from Madagascar, and it is heading out towards the Cyclone Graveyard. Not too long left for this storm now, uh, which at the beginning didn't look like it would form. And in the South Pacific, there's generally heavy weather going on, but it's all very disorganized and it doesn't look like anything will be able to form out of that. Uh, but nonetheless, rain and potential for local flooding for some of those Pacific Island communities. Let's check in on Filippo then. It is a foregone conclusion where it's going, but it is 878 kilometers from Beloha, that's on the southern tip of Madagascar, 880 from Sihombe, 981 from Tolagnaro, 1606 from Prince Edward Island, which is way down south, and 1634 from Marion Island, some of those uh, very southerly islands that they have in the Indian Ocean between the rest of the world and Antarctica basically uh, that's where it's heading for now southeasterly movement but we do have winds probably about 65 miles per hour on that right now here's 18 s it's tropical depression now but 413 kilometers from Rowley Shoals 434 from Barrow Island 462 from Dampier 475 from Caratha and 584 from Exmouth all along the western coast or, or the northern coast of Western Australia. All of those areas could be impacted with heavy rainfall if the strong winds don't get there. Uh, still a little bit of uncertainty about that as we're about to find out with the models. So here's the latest satellite imagery across the world right now. First of all, that Atlantic system. Well, it's looking quite decent on that imagery, but it still would appear to be not fitting the prerequisites for tropical cyclone formation. But certainly an interesting system to look at that's expected to dive down towards the southwest uh, and interact with a larger extratropical system over the next couple of days. Well, here is the uh, southwest Indian Ocean. That's obviously Filippo there starting to really shuffle along towards the southeast, getting a little bit more exposed as it goes along there as well. So it really doesn't have very long left before it starts to uh, turn post-tropical. It's not too far from hurricane equivalent status, we believe, um, with an estimated pressure, I think, is around 994 millibars, maybe even below than that now, actually. Uh, 982 it was actually earlier on Articos fix. 
And this is the Australian region. Those two systems still active right now, obviously 18S on the left-hand side and Invest 94S on the right-hand side. And you can see on that right-hand side system, it's moved a little bit further north than what we were expecting. We thought it would move a little bit further inland. 18S not looking so good on that satellite imagery. Here's some more uh, close-up imagery from the floater there. Uh, late visibles show that there is a circulation there, at least at the low levels, uh, just underneath that little blob of uh, convection that's blown up there in the last few frames. Most of the convection, therefore, is uh, quite displaced to the west there, um, and so that's what we're looking at right now. Movement not very far at all. If it's moving in any direction, it's probably slightly towards the south or southwest, uh, but it really is uh, unsure about which way to go. There's some rapid scan as well from uh, Himawari 9. Uh, so that's some more imagery there. Now this is Invest 94S, which is scraping along the, uh, the top end of Australia right now, uh, eventually moving towards um, the east, eventually towards uh, Groot Island, and that's where we expect it will impact as it develops again along the coast of the Gulf of Carpentaria. That'll be in a couple of days. As of right now though, it's producing very high cloud tops and dumping a lot of rain as you can clearly see on the radar. Radar also shows that it probably has a circulation there but it looks a little bit stretched and warped and it probably doesn't fit the uh, classification yet but 80% chance that's pretty decent. There's the Atlantic as a whole showing you the wide view there. Uh, with those little storms towards the north and this is the southwest Indian Ocean, the full view there as well. Filippo, quite a large system it has to be said, almost as large as South Africa actually and it's quickly diving towards the southeast. So this is the Australian region view there as well. Both of those systems, not particularly large, uh, but that may change certainly in 18S later on down the line. Sea surface temperatures show that the El Nino is on borrowed time. The uh, cooler sea surface temperatures there, quite clear to see that La Nina is on the way. The Atlantic showing that those temperatures are still looking decent in the Caribbean Sea to over 26 degrees Celsius, closer to 28 in a few spots. And in the Western Pacific, it's looking pretty decent too. Around Palau, it's around 28 degrees Celsius. Guam, not so far off there and stretching towards the Philippines. Warm temperatures all around there, enough for cyclone development. North Indian Ocean looking decent, those temperatures just about to reach the coast of Bangladesh and also in the Arabian Sea those uh, warm temperatures starting to stretch a little bit further north as well. The Southwest Indian Ocean still looking good for further developments possibly around Mauritius and La Reunion those temperatures are above 28 degrees Celsius near Madagascar it's above 30 degrees Celsius and off towards the northwest there as well and in the Australian region there very warm temperatures as you'd expect at this time of year over 30 degrees Celsius in quite a few spots where 18S is right now it's near 30 degrees and where 94S is it could be stretching a little bit higher than 30 degrees as well. South Pacific looking good too between Samoa and Fiji those temperatures pushing 32 degrees Celsius similarly in the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu around 30. Compared to average then this is what the temperatures look like the Atlantic is certainly quite hot the Eastern Pacific is mostly hit and miss actually with the cool pool starting to arise there and in the southwest Indian Ocean or the South Indian Ocean one or two cool spots starting to appear there now as well off Indonesia which of course is where 18S started off and all of that cloud cover surely contributed to that. Let's check the oceanic heat content, still extremely high values for large parts of the South Pacific. Certainly can't rule out any big systems forming there before the end of the season. North Pacific also looking decent as well, certainly for the time of year. Very early on we're already seeing a few areas getting quite good there uh, towards values that you'd see during the main season, even in the Eastern Pacific. Let's check the computer models with the fixed background now. Uh, but first of all, this system that we're watching in the North Atlantic, well, it ends up being a big, massive amalgamation of storms and two massive extratropical cyclones eventually interacting with each other too. So the North Atlantic, very busy. Uh, but you'll briefly see that system that we're watching there getting uh, thrown around in orbit of that very large extratropical system, lose its strength and momentum. By the time it reaches Southern Island, there's hardly anything left of it. 
looking at the Australian region then obviously these two systems that we're watching GFS reckons they'll both strengthen substantially the next five days the Gulf of Carpentaria system briefly reaches hurricane status and makes landfall there moves quite slowly as well that'll be a massive rain dumper there if that happens and also <clears throat> 18s there moving very slowly towards the southwest and guess what no landfall expected now from the GFS which is much different to what it was saying yesterday just goes to show how these models can completely flip-flop so this here is perhaps the biggest concern for the Australian region and that's the rainfall expectations particularly from 94s and this is what pushes it really into high-end code yellow actually right now on Ticos and that's because of extremely high amounts of rain expected along the coast of the Northern Territory around the Gulf of Carpentaria in excess of 26 inches of rain there that is over 650 millimeters and around the Cape York Peninsula as well some high values there up to 20 inches 500 millimeters Darwin expecting another 200 millimeters towards Broome and Dar Derby possibly getting up towards 200 millimeters as well and look out there towards 18s if it does stall in this fashion that we're expecting now it will uh, produce over 60 inches of rainfall over water thankfully far away from any of those land areas so in the longer range you can see exactly what it's up to it doesn't move very much at all strengthens and then it starts to push off towards the west and off it goes it's making the crossing to across the indian ocean now starting to weaken as it moves along starts to lose um, height as well talking about uh, latitude there getting towards higher latitudes and so we expect that weakening will happen by the time we get towards the end of that 10 day period we still can't rule out though it making landfall in western australia nonetheless it will have a big bulk of storm force winds on the southern side and they could still receive storm force winds even if it doesn't make landfall and this is looking towards the South Pacific side of things. Um, a couple of systems trying to develop there. Not really much gets going. But once again, talking about rainfall there beyond the uh, seven day period, it could keep on going and it could be a massive period of rainfall across Australia in the next two weeks and maybe a little bit more than that. That's been the theme this season, hasn't it? That's the serious stuff done. Check out the uh, Force 13 store, scan the barcode, and that will take you right there. You can check out our full season and individual storm animations on request for you and are still waiting for a Hone t-shirt, which uh, doesn't seem like it's going to sell out anytime soon. Well, in the silly range, uh, get ready because we don't really take these seriously, but we see the continuation of 18S there. Does it survive the whole 16-day model period? Possibly. It continues westwards, slows down a little bit again. It almost got took away by a front, and then it finally collapses just before the end of the month as it continues to drift west-southwesterly there, far away from any land areas. Um, and so an interesting scenario produced there by the GFS in which it doesn't make landfall anymore but I would not get comfortable along the coast of Western Australia things can change very quickly and we're just having a general look here at the South Pacific none of these systems become tropical cyclones but we're certainly having significant activity in the subtropical and extratropical zone of the South Pacific New Zealand getting hit by one there and towards the end of the run uh, New Caledonia getting a very weak system that hangs around for quite a while there almost becomes a tropical cyclone but doesn't manage it as we get towards the end of that 16 day period so that was the models on this day a very powerful storm on March 14th 1994 and what a season that was in the South Indian Ocean it was Cyclone Litan at this point that was peaking as a high-end category 450 miles per hour and an estimated pressure of 910 millibars as it continued to cruise towards Madagascar and one of a few storms in that era to have been pictured from space uh, not from satellite images from uh, space uh, craft and we also had Cyclone Mariola, which had just formed, and Cyclone Sharon, which would then become another powerful cyclone off the coast of Western Australia. Back to today then, the first name on the Atlantic naming list shouldn't be forthcoming, let's hope. It's Alberto. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Aletta. And in the Central Pacific, our next name is Hone, as it has been for nearly five years. 
In the Western Pacific, our next name now is Iwiniar, and in the North Indian Ocean, it will be Rimal. Up to 11 storms so far, I reckon we'll be seeing 12 pretty soon. In the Southern Hemisphere, the next name in the Australian region is Megan. In the Southwest Indian Ocean now, it's Gamane, and in the South Pacific, it is Peter. That's all from today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll see you again with more updates tomorrow.